always thought, you know, I was being safe and I was doing everything that I needed to do to keep myself safe. And my kids were following the same thing to keep them safe. And you always think like, this can't happen to me. And it did. Pre-COVID, I was really active with my kids. You know, we were out playing basketball, we were out playing kickball, we were always out doing something. I wasn't in the best health or shape. We would always go out, do an activity, but then we'd go out and eat. And we would have a few drinks and that's where we had fun. I kind of had a, a random cough. You know, one day I would cough once and then, you know, a couple days later, I would cough again. By day five, if it's a cold, I should be feeling some kind of relief, and I'm not. I feel like I'm getting worse. Um, and that night, I was like starting to get the body aches and I had fever because I had chills really bad. So I drove myself to the emergency room, and it took me 20 minutes to walk from my car to the emergency room. Right when they put me back, I was there maybe 10 minutes, and one of the nurses is like, 99% chance you're good, we're gonna keep you. They started doing x-rays and she says, we're gonna take a COVID test. You know, we'll have it, uh, your results in about six hours. And when my nurse came in and said, your test came back and you're positive, I remember I just cried. Hi, my name is Josette Vigil and I'm a COVID survivor. I got to the point where I, I couldn't, I didn't have any more strength and I didn't have any more fight in me. Once I got to the ICU, I felt a little bit better because they were giving me administering different medications at that point. And then I took a turn for the worse again. That evening, the nurse came in and she said, well, she said, we're gonna put you on the ventilator. I cried and I said, I need to call my kids. And so I think like that was my fear, right? And I said, I just need to tell them <clears throat> that I love them. I remember calling, but I think the doctor took over the call and told my daughter. You know, I was outside and raking the yard and feeling decent. And I got a call from her, a FaceTime. And I was so excited to answer. And I answered and it was the nurse. She explained the process to me because my mom couldn't talk. So it was actually the nurse that called from her phone. Um, and just when she had me call my brothers, she's like, so, you know, we kind of waited throughout the day and we're at a point if we wait any longer, she's going to enter a danger zone. And so we just think the time is right now. They said that her heart did something funky in the middle of the night. And um, typically with patients, when they see that, that they have a higher risk of death. They actually were able to call me back later that night and tell me that um, everything came back normal with her heart. That was a good step. When I finally woke up, woke up, I was okay. And I no longer, I was no longer in pain. I was awake with the ventilator on. I still had the tubes in. And I remember when they sat me up, the first thing I asked for was to call my kids. And even though I couldn't talk, the first thing that I said was, I love you. And she was able to understand. Welcome home, Mama! If there's anything that anybody takes from this, it's just take care of yourself. Because your, your family suffers. Your family suffers more than you. Half the time I was out of my mind because I was medicated. 
or I was sleeping because I was on the ventilator and my family had to continue day in and day out of not knowing what tomorrow was going to be. My daughter had to have difficult conversations with my, my, her, my boys, her brothers. Recovery mentally right now, it's difficult just because of the rise in the cases. The healing process is just as difficult to get through as going through the virus itself. Honestly, I had severe PTSD um, being home, and that's kind of when everything hit me of what I went through. My son, you know, throughout my time being home, he was the one that helped take care of me. I remember I'd wake him up and I'd be like, let's go for a walk. And he'd be like, okay, let's go. And he'd be so worried and he'd be like, mom, are you sure? Like, like let's go a little bit further. You know, so he was like so nervous, but it was those little victories that led me up to asking the kids to take me up to Mother Cabrini's shrine because I wanted to walk the stairs and I wanted to pray. It's a place where people go to pray um, for themselves or for the sick. And you, each step you go is, is you say a prayer. It's been seven months that I've started the whole virus. So this first x-ray was taken April 3rd. So I was already on the ventilator two days. And you can see my lungs were pretty full. Um, and then the second photo was taken August 19th. The difference is unbelievable. And even now, I don't feel like I, I used to. You know, I can't pinpoint it, but I'm not, I'm not who I used to be. We all need to do our part and take this virus as serious as we can. We could be saving that next person to the right that might not be as lucky um, like me.